you seeking to build an enduring and meaningful business or career as an entrepreneur or as a career person then get ready for a power 2022 seminar series for three wednesdays of winning strategies three nights of high impact learning with three distinguished industry voices and experts all in one place at icgc open heavens temple at jirigana east Lagon. speaking at this year's seminar series are the marketplace apostle and celebrated media personality bernard avle ghana on 4th may 2022 at 7 p.m the renowned and award-winning serial entrepreneur dedo kofi ghana 11th May 2022 at 7 p.m. and the astute management and business consultant Dr. Bernard Apia, UK on 18th May 2022 at 7 p.m. Empower 2022 seminar series. It is enlightening, enriching, engaging and exciting. Save these dates a fourth 11th and 18th in May and book your seats.
Ladies and gentlemen, speaking this Wednesday at 7 p.m. on an Par 2022 series will be Mr. Bernard Koku Avle, the celebrated broadcast journalist and the marketplace apostle. Our productive capacity as a nation must increase. It means that we must apply the knowledge. Ghana has men of knowledge, but we don't have a lot of men of application. Your, your mastery in life is not in your knowledge. It's in your application of what you know. So raise men of capacity. The church needs men of capacity who can take a system and convert it to produce results. But not only that, the world also needs us. Empower 2022 Seminar Series. It is enlightening, enriching, engaging, and empowering.
Let's give a big hand clap to the sons of Asaph. Praise the name of the Lord. We want to quickly start and uh, we'll not wait for anybody. All right. So um, um, I have said over the period that um, as a church or as Christians and also the philosophy of ICGC is practical Christianity, excellence, and human dignity. The sense that we believe in building believers or believe Christians in every facet of our lives. Not that we'll just be spiritual thinking, I will die tomorrow and go to heaven. I will ask that um, as much as possible, those who are behind you first sit because it helps our pictures, helps all those things. So please, let's do that. I know the rain came in and all that. If your parents are with their children that have to manage them fine, but I want to do so. And um, every year I try to spend time praying and to find out the areas by which we need such people to come and speak. And the person that will be speaking tonight, it's somebody I got to know from somewhere 2008. And I have followed his trajectory of his um, of his life, his ministry, his commitment to the things of God. And one of the things that amazes me is that people get into the space he's in and become co corrupted. But he has stayed with integrity. He has stayed with um, uh, um, grace in that area. And for me, today, I called him and he said, I'm the first person to make him do a pre-recorded meet uh, program for his program he does, which is a very, the, the, uh, yes, to be here. And I told you last Sunday. So, as of now, they think he's in the studio, but, <laughs> so too, <laughs> but um, uh, he's a man that I really admire. I call him the apostle in the marketplace. I call him all kinds of things, but he was the one who um, emceeing my, the, 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 the launching of my first book and also my second book. And uh, we've always been in touch, and uh, we are glad to have men. Today, I'm also very happy that he brought my friend's son, Apostle Johnson Stankofi. Let them see you. Stand up, stand up. It's looking like daddy a lot. <laughs> so after this video introduction, please sit down. Um, uh, the next person you see is Minister Bernard Avila. I'll be happy to hear from you on what you think of what we've said tonight. Thank you for watching. Stay safe. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bernardino Avle is a Ghanaian broadcast journalist who hosts one of the most popular radio and television shows in Ghana, Accra. He is currently the host of the City Breakfast Show on Accra-based City FM, a multiple award-winning breakfast show on radio and also the general manager of City FM. Bernard was also recently named one of Ghana's 20 most influential business leaders under 40 by the Business World magazine. He is an Edward R. Murrell Fellow of Journalism and a Chevening Scholar. Bernard holds a bachelor's degree in economics from the University of Ghana and an MBA from Warwick University in the UK. Bernard is a fellow of the fifth class of the Africa Leadership Initiative, West Africa, and is a member of the Aspen Global Leadership Network. As a revered and celebrated broadcast journalist in Ghana and beyond, Mr. Bernard Avle was adjudged as the best Ghana journalist of the year 2017 for his insatiable passion for telling the Ghanaian and African story. As a talk show host, he is one of the faces of a new kind of broadcaster who combines a strong grasp of social, economic and political issues with a lively and fun presenting style. Our speaker tonight is also a marketplace apostle who holds dear Christian values and ethics as his guiding principles in the marketplace. 
Ladies and gentlemen, with the Open Heavens Temple welcome, let's receive the General Manager and the host of the City Breakfast Show, Mr. Bernard Avle, with a standing ovation and a big round of applause. We are glad to host you, sir. First time Pastor Eric brought me here, the place wasn't yet ready, and he showed me all the corners. So, but I can't recognize the place anymore because everything has changed. Pastor Eric, thank you. Um, I told Samens I was I was going to record my show today, and he said why, and I said, <laughs> you know, he likes Pastor Eric's name, so I said Pastor Eric Zezemeku. <laughs> he tells Zezemeku my regards. So sometimes I record my shows, but today's show I just decided to record because when. Pastor Eric called me. He, he sounded very urgent. And it's a real pleasure to be here. And let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for this opportunity. We are in your presence to speak that which you have done in our lives. Let no falsehood come out of my mouth. Let only that which will edify and glorify your son, Jesus Christ, be spoken. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, sorry for coming late. And I didn't anticipate the traffic well. I've been thinking about how to approach the topic, and um, I've been asking people to pray for me so I don't preach. I, I don't like preaching because it gets me in trouble. I just want to speak. I actually look forward to the Q&A because sometimes questions bring out insights that preparation cannot. So wise people are great questioners. And in the, my line of work, we rate your astuteness by the quality of your questions. And sometimes your whole career can be defined by one question. So we agonize over the right question. So I look forward to hearing your questions. And I really don't want to preach to you. You know, the way church works, if you preach, people can ask you questions. Because the anointing is flowing. The Lord has spoken. So I'm asking God to help me to just take it line upon line. And I think Pastor Eric wants me to do that. And the other thing I'll say is that the topic is very wild. You know, when you talk about marketplace apostle apostle is a very serious thing <laughs> so when they add marketplace to the apostles wild so be praying for me okay i'm just a i'm a christian i i really don't like separating church from secular and spiritual i'm, I'm not i'm not a fan of that because you know i can come and take the mic and sing a nice song and then when i enter the studio i'm a liar you know, so when I was young, you used to pray for your spiritual life, your marital life. They are, it's the same thing in my view. So I, I will share my experience. And in doing so, some principles will come out. There are some things in everybody's life which are very idiosyncratic. So the Holy Ghost to give you insight into what applies to you and what does not. Everybody's calling is different. Paul and Peter and John were not the same. So although they are general guiding principles for life, they are idiosyncratic issues. Am I making sense? But one of the key things is whether you will succeed in the marketplace or in the church place, you must have a clear relationship with Christ. You know, Christianity is not a title to be born. It's not a set of rules to be followed. Hello? I don't like the way some of you are looking at me. <laughs> Christianity is not like some title. You know, wear a t-shirt. I'm a Christian. I'm a new creation. It's not by t-shirt. It's not even by church membership. And I'm not against church membership. You know, God is raising a generation of people who will demonstrate his life in the world. Christianity is growing a life. Growing a life. And if you're a woman who's been pregnant before, you know what growing a life means. You know, I, I, I used to think that, ah, why can't I have four kids at the same time? Every child must go through their nine months. So growth is a process. Am I making sense? So the first thing we say is that Christianity is a life that must be grown, that must be nurtured. It's very important because you can learn principles of success in the media. But that may not make you the light God wants to make you. Because Jesus says, for without me, you can do nothing. Now, the last time I checked, a lot of us are doing a lot of things without Christ. So it was Christ's line when he said in John 15, that without me, you can do nothing. 
the Christian life is driven by grace. So everything they've read and said about me is grace. These are my introductory thoughts. Making sense so far? If I'm making sense, say amen. amen. Fantastic. So I'll share my experience in what Pastor Eric said, marketplace apostle. Because the field in which I work is a very interesting field. It's media. You know, and media is, <laughs> I don't know. When I was very young, I went to, a, my mom was in a church. I won't mention the church's name. And there was a day the man was talking about the end time, eschatology. And when he was preaching, one of the demons of the end time was media. <laughs> Say with the journalist there, Charlie, they had, he, in fact, she had a picture of frogs. She said they are the, the prelude to the Antichrist. Because they are the ones who spread the evil of the devil. And I never really knew, I didn't want to be a journalist when I was young. It was not an ambition I had. You know? So you're, you're, and I need to say a few things about purpose. Because you can't excel in a marketplace if you don't know your purpose. And I've said this somewhere before. Your purpose is not your decision, it's your discovery. This is very important. So my ambition for myself did not include journalism. At, you know, when we, when we were in secondary school, when you are leaving school, you write things in the book, the 98-year book. The things I wrote, journalism wasn't part of the top five. I didn't even think it was a profession for me. But God was so merciful to me, he led me into this field. So if you are young or old, life doesn't begin until purpose is discovered. And you can't be effective for God if you don't know purpose. Purpose is the meaning of your life. You know, it's not your profession. It's the meaning of your life, why you exist. I was telling somebody a couple of days ago that the donkey that was spoken about in Mark, there were many donkeys who were his mates, but he's the only one referenced in that reading because the meaning of his life was that the master would need him at a particular time. So whether you are in media or banking, whether you are in music or politics, God didn't put you there to get money for yourself. That's not the reason why God put you there. God put you there because a day will come, he will need a horse to ride. And he's going to send somebody to say, I want to move to the next town. You will see a coat tied. Tell the owner the master has need of him. Now, if at the material time he comes, I'm saying, Charlie, I'm chewing grass. My mother sends me somewhere, I'm not ready. Then you have lost the essence of your life. So, the meaning of your life must be from the context of Christ. So, I'm not in media because I want to be famous. A lot of us use our professions to build our CVs. And this day, the CV must be yellow because white is too common. So, it light orange, and you change the font small, put some things there. This is important because I've spent, I've been doing media since 2000. I went to Legon at the age of 19, the year 2000. In the second semester, I started being trained as a broadcast journalist. I'm, I'll be 41 in two weeks' time. So I've spent half of my life in journalism. But it's only a few years ago that I, I discovered why God put me there. God is so kind. Sometimes you can be doing, some, you can be doing the right thing, but I don't understand why you're doing it. But until you understand purpose, you can't be effective. You can be winning awards, though. So it's not about awards. Do you understand? You must know what God has called you to do, why he has called you to do it, and then the how. That how is what we'll talk about. Because there is an approach to living. So, yes, I'm a journalist. Yes, you're a doctor. Why did he give me the gift? And how does he want me to exhibit it? Am I making sense? So it's not just the what. Purpose is in faces. The what is crucial. But you can be doing the what the wrong way. You can be doing the right thing the wrong way. Or you can be doing the right thing for the wrong reason. There are people in media because they want to be popular. There are people in media because they want to be influential. Popularity is not bad. Influence is not bad. People are in media because they want money. Money is not bad. But that's not why I'm in media. Am I making sense? So you must know what you are. I, you can shoot me. You, I, I can't change who I am. Oh, Bernard, you are so intelligent. You speak well. Go and become a lawyer. I don't need law to enhance my journalism. It's not, I, I respect lawyers, but it's not my field. When I was in City in 2005, I was 
court correspondent. I covered court for one month. I said, this is not for me. I can't be a lawyer. Most people use journalism as a stepping stone to law. God bless them. It is not my field. I won't do it. I have only one life to live. Now, you cannot be powerful in your ministry if you don't insist on who you are. You can't define me because in my house they are all lawyers. No. When God was telling Jeremiah who he was, he didn't ask his father. He said, before I formed you, I knew you. And before you came out of your mother's belly, I had already ordained you. He rubbish his mother. So what I'm saying is that you, purpose is idiosyncratic. You must disc there is a day you must know who you are through the prism of Christ. Paul said, when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, to reveal his son in me, I consulted not with flesh and blood. There is, you can't be effective in the kingdom if there isn't a day where you know who you are. 2 Corinthians 3, 18, we all beholding us in a glass, the glory of God. So you see, Christ is a mirror. Proverbs says, as in water, face answers to face. So a man's heart reveals who he is. Now, Christ is that water that when you look into, you see yourself. So, you must know who you are after Christ. Because that's, that's, that's the what of, of that's the, the what. So, I'm a, I'm a broadcaster. Now, that what is timed. That doesn't mean till I'm 70 years I'll be a broadcaster. God doesn't reveal his purpose to you from the beginning to the end. Sometimes he gives you, I always tell people, purpose is like a big house. There are many rooms in it. When I came here, I went to Pastor Eric's office. Now, if I behave well, he'll bring me to this room. If I misbehave, I'll stay there. Because if I, if I reason, I start commuting my shirt, take off my belt, and I start dancing. You say, Kofi, be with, be with Bernard, I'm coming. Eh? You say, eh, where's the prayer warrior? Let's start prayer meeting. The Bernard of Ajay is getting mad. So, because I conducted myself properly, he came here. So, your purpose is like, he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions. Your purpose is like many houses, many rooms in a big house. When you qualify through the etiquette of the first, you move to the second. So, for now, I'm a journalist, and I must stick to it. That's the what. Number two, I must know the why. Why did he, is it because he won't, because a lot of people have the what. For many years, I was in journalism because I wanted to prove to people that I was eloquent. You know, when you are the seventh of eight children, you, you, you get beaten a lot. And you, you, when you are younger, you are not smart. Like when I was in university primary, like everybody was, my, 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 we are four boys, four girls. Of the four boys, I'm the last. Gabriel did science. Shark went to tech. Then Dela Prisek as well. He did jog, history, art, literature, A-level, four A's. Got a scholarship to U.S. He's a Harvard, big man. Michael, 11 ones, B.C., great keyboard, is very quiet. As for Alosky, every day, playing football. <laughs> From nursery one to JSS three. Collected prize only twice, class three. And class four, for good progress. Good progress means, Charlie, you shine, now you do for, you see, so this is, I remember there was a day when the school bus came in, and then Aunt Sister Hannah was talking to my siblings. So Michael was in JSS three or something. He was among the top five, and then my little sister, and they say, ah, now Ben, I don't need prize. I say, oh, Charlie, <laughs> nothing. You see, so it's very important to know who you are in that sense. So I wasn't the smartest. And as a young person, my ambition was to prove that I was smart. And because you are young, you learn how to lie quickly. So my mouth moves very quickly, very quick-witted, right? So I can speak a lot of things because I don't want to be beaten by my brothers. So I learned to defend myself by my mouth. So throughout my, so when I even got into, in fact, how did I even get into radio? A friend of mine invited me to a debate, and I lost the debate. But I was arguing so much, they gave me a job. That's a different story. So, I mean, they, <laughs> if you haven't heard, the topic was even funny. They said, men and women who are more promiscuous. I remember so much. This show was hosted by DJ Black. And I went to Araba Sam Anan. She went to Gehe, Voter Hall, level 100. So the Araba will speak, I will speak. They opened the phone lines. All the callers supported Araba, including the men. They say men are more promiscuous than women completely. I lost the debate. But I was arguing so much, Sankara said, I like the way you speak. Are you free on Mondays? We can make you a journalist. Of course, God had been trying to get me into journalism because prior to that, Maximus had a show. There was a show on Sunday called Open Air Theater. Teddy Totime hosted that show. And Maximus was doing a radio drama. And I was in level 100 in LPU. So I'll follow Maximus to read a radio drama script. 
for the first semester of level 100. But every time they went for radio universe meetings, I said, me, I'm not, I'm not interested in radio. I just want to do radio drama and go back. So you see how God is kind. He used Maximus first, but I didn't listen to him. Then I went to do a debate based on my argumentative nature. I lost the debate. Then Sankara said, no, I think you should become a journalist. Now look at it. Me, who didn't know anything about journalism, by level 200, I was hosting like three shows. I was a student coordinator by level 300. So your purpose is a discovery, not a decision. I discovered it. Now, having known the what, the why is key. Because as I said, you can be doing it for money, for fame. You can be doing it because your father never approved you. So I want to prove to my father that me too, I'm somebody. So I will do everything to succeed. And if my father doesn't approve me, I'm a failure. That's not why I'm doing it. Am I making sense? So as young people, you must know why. Look at what he said to Esther. He said, maybe God put you here up for... Do you know that it's possible that the only reason why I'm in media is that maybe one day a major national issue will come and God used me to speak to it to prevent war. One day. In fact, your whole life could be summarized probably in one moment. That's why I said that donkey, if the time Christ needed that donkey, the donkey was not available, he would have missed his chance. So you must know the, the why. And when you know the why, you know, Muro says something. He says, life without purpose is time without meaning. Life without purpose is time without meaning. When you know the why, it makes time, I, I mean, when I wake up in the morning and I'm reading, today I interviewed the TUC boss. When I'm reading the history of Ghana labor, it's because I know why I need that information. It's not because I want to while away time. Oh, Liverpool versus Villarreal. Oh, let me, it's not nice. Let me read about, no, 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 no. I have an interview to record at 4 p.m. So when I take the history of the trade union in Ghana, because I have a purpose, my time has an assignment. So people who don't have purpose waste time. So when you see somebody who has a lot of time, he doesn't have purpose. So he says, life without purpose is time without meaning because purpose gives meaning to time. So you must know the, the why. Why? And that why must go beyond ambition. And this is true whether you are a pastor or a, a normal person. Now, I always tell people, it's better to be an honest taxi driver than a lying pastor. God doesn't rate us on the basis of professions. Because for every profession, there is a qualification to get to the highest level of it. So I don't need to be a politician to validate my ministry. God can do much more with an honest journalist than a lying politician. Am I making sense? So now, why did he put me in media? I must know. Okay, now that why then determines the how. Because when you know the why he put you there, then you know that you can achieve the what and the by your own method. So there is, a, it says, the, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10, it says, The labor of the fool wearies every one of them because he knows not how to go into the city. <laughs> the labor of the fool, he wearies himself and his friends because he doesn't. So there's a how to. Okay, now, morning show hosting has many how-tos. Now, if you were called to do it because you want popularity, you want girls, you want to build three houses, there are, ways, there are things you must do. Stir up controversy, go to club, meet people. I remember for the first six years of my life as a breakfast show host, you can ask some ends. Every meeting, the discussion was that Bernard is not out there. He's not at any event. He goes to church, he comes home, he doesn't do anything. Nobody knows him. He's intelligent, but his show is boring because nobody knows him. Okay, now because our callings are different and because my master is Christ, it's not my, the, the, the steps to my rising is different. Am I making sense? So even though we are all journalists, I don't have to go to club. I don't have to play certain kinds of things. I don't have to do certain things to succeed. And mind you, the righteous path is slower than the short path. I'll give you an example, Genesis 4. Genesis 4. I don't have time to read it, but if you look at when Adam fell and after the curse, Cain killed Abel, all of those things. There were two things that came out of uh, Eve. The, the, now, the surviving son was called Cain. Cain had children. Charlie, after five chapters, Cain had like six generations. He had, you can check it, Genesis 4. He had, I mean, a son who had another son, Jabal, Jubal, Tubal, Cain, and some other woman. And then by the time they realized he's built a city. Huh? Now, let's read it briefly. It will help you. Genesis 4. Just to get quickly into my message. Genesis 4. Now, the path 
to doing something that Christ has called. And I'm coming to the message. The path to doing what Christ has called you to is a narrow path. Now, Genesis 4, just read quickly. I'll start, I won't read the whole thing. Maybe a couple of quick verses in there. Verse 16, the family of Cain. Genesis 4, 16. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod, on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Enoch. And he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son. Quick! Enoch. This is two, two verses, so he's already built a city. To Enoch was born Irad. Irad begot Mehujael. And Mehujael begot Methusael. And Methusael begot Lamech. Look at verse 19. Lamech took for himself two wives. Quick! <laughs> he's the apostle of polygamy. <laughs> so you can be an apostle, but what are you an apostle of? He's the pioneer of polygamy. How did he even know you could marry two? Hey, Lamech. And the name of one was Ada. I'm sure she's Igbo. And the name of the other was Zila. And Ada bore Jabal. Now look at emphasis, verse 20. Ada bore Jabal. He was the father of those who dwelt in tents and have livestock. It's a type. I'll come to it quickly. His brother's name was Jubal. He was the father of those who played the harp and the flute. And as for Zila, she bore Tubal Cain an instructor of every craftsman in bronze and in iron. And the sister of Tubal Cain was Nama. Hello? Now look at verse 25. And Adam knew his, son, his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For the Lord had appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain killed. And as for Seth, to him also a son was born, and his name was Enosh. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. So look at the difference in the trajectory of Cain. The first thing you notice about Cain was that he left the presence of God. <laughs> so whilst Adam agonized at the gate of the garden, waiting for God to have mercy, Cain moved away from the presence of God. Number two, he established a civilization away from God. Now the four the, the, the grandchildren that he had, they are four types. So there was the first guy who created, <laughs> he lived in tents and had livestock. Take note of that. He lived in tents and had livestock. And I'm using that to make a point. Now, what does that mean? He created employment. It's not bad to create jobs. But what Jabal did was I created a system of self-support. Write that down. A system of self-support. Now, then Jubal, his brother, he was the father of those who played the harp and the flute. So that was music. So Jabal created work for self-support. Jubal created music for self-fulfillment. Am I making sense? I'm getting somewhere with this. Then the third one. And as for Zilla, she had a son called Tubal Cain, an instructor of every craftsman in bronze. So Tubal Cain created weapons for mass destruction, weapons for self-defense. Hello? So Jabal was self-support through work. Jubal was self-fulfillment through music. Tubal Cain was self-defense through weapons. And the interesting thing, she had another daughter called Nama. Nama. In Islam, Nama is meat. But in Aramaic, it means adornment for self-indulgence. Huh? So look at it. They, Cain left the presence of God, and by six chapters, he created a civilization that did not depend on God. Now, he already built a city. So the path of Cain is quick. But look at Adam. Adam is still waiting. And then Adam knew his wife and gives birth to Seth. Then they name Seth. And then Seth has a child called Enos. Then men began to call upon the name of the Lord. So you see, there is a difference between the path of the just and those who are multiplying very quickly. How does that apply to what we are saying? For us who want to do media or whatever we want to do for the glory of God, number one, our path is narrow. Number two, our process may be longer. Our process, because, think about it. These guys have created self-support, self-defense, self-amusement. Do you understand? In six verses, there is already six generations. Now, they are all giving birth to, but the, the process for multiplying is regulated by a different system. Now, I believe that Cain was the founder of the world system. 
Now, I am in media. Media, a lot of everything we do is affected by the world. Now, the world system is, if you look, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's, 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 a, it's called cosmos. 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 It's a structured system that organizes things. So, it's not the work you do, but it's what's driving the work. Now, there are people who are doing Uber driving who are not operating on the world system. And there are men who are pastoring using the world system. So it's not what you do, it's what is driving it. So now there's an operating system for the world. Am I making sense? Now, there are many metaphors for the world. I don't have time. The Bible talks about, you know, a couple of quick things. The Old Testament is a shadow of the New Testament. So a lot of things in the Old Testament are types and shadows. Let me give you an example. Only four books of the Bible in the Old Testament mention Satan. Genesis, Satan shows up. Job, he shows up. Isaiah, he shows up. Ezekiel, he shows up. But he's been there throughout. Huh? So Genesis, he shows up in the garden. In Job, he shows up going to and fro, asking God to bring Job down. Then in Isaiah and Ezekiel, they says, how are you falling, oh Lucifer? So Satan is specifically mentioned only in four Old Testament books. But when the light of the world comes in the New Testament, right from Matthew, he's there. So you see, darkness existed, but it takes light to expose it. What am I saying? So there are many things in the Old Testament that portend realities in the New Testament, and it takes greater light to pull it out. So what I'm saying is that the concept of the world system has always been there, but it's John that defined it because John was working with a greater light. So even though Satan was hidden in the Old Testament, he was not seen visibly. But when Christ came, he appeared to him because Christ has a greater light. Now, I'm using this to tell you that the world system has been running things for a long time. Even though it was not properly named, it was John had codified it. Now, Egypt is a type of the world. Now, the Egypt is the, the world that holds men in bondage. Then there's Chaldea. He called, uh, what's his name? Abraham out of the Chaldees. Chaldea represents the confusion of the world. So Egypt represents the bondage of the world. Chaldea represents the confusion of the world. Then there's also Babylon, the system that enslaves, the system of assimilation. Now, so there are four typologies. There's Egypt, there's Chaldea, there's Sodom and Gomorrah, that represents perversion. And then there's Babylon. Now, let me zero in on Babylon. Babylon is the only only typology of the world that shows up throughout the Bible and enters Revelation. So what am I saying? In the Old Testament, we couldn't see the world clearly. God was using stories of people and their itinerant movement. But in the New Testament in Revelation, it tells you about the real meaning of Babylon. Babylon is a, a process of assimilation. The oppression of Egypt wants to beat you to submission. But Babylon chooses the best. Now, what Babylon does is, Babylon says, I don't want you to stay in your old country. Come and let me acculturate you. So Nebuchadnezzar brings you, and then he picks the best of the people. Then he changes their name. So Daniel, he calls Belteshazzar. And then he calls Hananiah, Michelle, and Nazaria by strange names. So what Babylon does is that it changes your name, but it cannot force you to eat its food. So what am I saying? Now, he brings the four boys into a system and in that system it's a system of assimilation you can keep your knowledge in science you can keep your knowledge in interpreting dreams you can keep your journalistic ethos but you are going to eat my food now the food of babylon is the doctrine because matthew 16 2, 12 explains to us that when he makes reference to living he's not talking about living of bread he says beware of the living of the pharisees so what am i saying what daniel did in one it was actually a rebellion against the doctrine of Babylon. So you can build a life on the basis of the doctrine of Babylon. So when we talk about media or whatever ministry you are in, it's not the profession that makes it unclean. It is the system that is driving it. The living of Babylon says, bring all the knowledge, bring the artifacts, bring all the skills, but use it to push the agenda of Nebuchadnezzar. So now the question is, in my work, what agenda am I pushing? Whose mandate am I executing? So don't call me a journalist, but whose job am I doing? So what you need to do in guarding against Babylon is to say, even though you can change my name and give me a name based on my profession, I will not eat of your food. So the issue about the, the, the marketplace is an issue about the doctrine. Now, the, the major doctrine driving most people's life is ambition. Ambition. Now, now a, a, an ambitious man is not far from error. An ambitious man is not far from error. So, you must understand that when you are walking under 
the instruction of the one who has called you having known your who having known your what having known your how you must now bring yourself under discipline because the path of the just is as a shining light christ says straight is the way and narrow is the gate now what does that mean it means that there are many things many people can do in my field there are many things that are legal there are many things that are allowed you can collect money from politicians you can go to their parties and mingle with them you can carry three phones and be changing passwords and chatting to young girls because it's fine it's okay there's nothing wrong with it but for those of you who want to represent christ he will not be powerful in your ministry if he's not first lord in your life so the concept of power and anointing is predicated on obedience so for some of us we may be doing the same journalistic work but the food of the system so there is a doctrine of media that says that when a man buys a dog it's news when a dog buys a man it's not news i must refuse that system there's a doctrine that says you must only put NDC and MPP on the same show so that when they come on they knock heads and you have viewers I refuse that system there's a doctrine that says once the politician is your friend and they can give you money to pay your fees then you can treat them better I refuse that doctrine so now it's about what is driving you now if you want to go fast you can work with their system because every system has guardians if you don't go to their parties you don't go to their events there are many programs there are many awards I've been invited I can't go it's not because I don't like awards it's because the spirit of the man doing the award doesn't agree with my master so now this is the issue it's about what is driving you it's not about an ambition it's, it's not about a, an award because God is not looking to God doesn't need an award to validate his calling in me so people say to me ah look at that he's such a great Christian he's such a great journalist and yet he's a Christian as if being a great journalist has anything to God God's purpose must be fulfilled and if I don't obey he'll find somebody else so let's come to a quick close what I'm saying is that you must surrender yourself to the one who has called you having known what he has called you to do and having agreed on why he has called you then you must subject yourself to the process I'm rushing because I don't have time Jesus said something he said, he who will come to me, he must first take up his cross. Look at it. He says, come to me, those who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke. Take it. So it's an act of your will. What is a yoke? A yoke is a structure placed on the neck of a beast of burden to limit and regulate how it works. Now, the science behind yokes is that you cannot yoke two things which are not of the same height. If you take a donkey which is four feet and add a donkey which is three feet, the, 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 the lesser donkey will suffer. The bigger donkey will struggle. So can two work together except they agreed? So when he says, take my yoke, he says, assume my form, take my stature, become like me because if it, it, so, which means that he's inviting you to the life he lived so if you are not of the same height with him he will raise you to that height if you're not of the same stature with him he will raise you to that stature so paul says to we all come to the knowledge of the fullness of the son of god so the purpose for his calling and the yoking is not to embarrass you it's to bring you to a path and to make you like him making sense great so let's let's try and wrap this up so there are four tests you will face with every lifting in the world more people are tested by position and promotion than by penury and poverty most of our prayers in the charismatic church about God should bless you I always tell people that you don't know a man until you give him power so now I was saying to somebody that there are great men yet one lie can destroy them one false report, one consistent negative propaganda can destroy a great ministry. Somebody can do, write a lie tattooed about a pastor and he will lose all his church members. It's easier to destroy than to build. So, so there are many tests I will face as a journalist. Now, the, 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 the test I pass determines the promotion I get. Now, God first tests you with luck because when you don't have money, you can still walk to church. We all passed that test. When I was in Medina, Adenta, we used to have a fellowship at number one. Even if I didn't have transport, I would walk and go. Po when say, if you are serving God with poverty, it's nice because you are just happy. You are walking. Everything is great. But let God give you power. Let God give you money. Let God give you AC. Let God give you six businesses. Now, serving God is an issue because you must calculate. So that's the first thing. So there, there's the test of penury. Most people pass that test. If they didn't pass, they won't see as poor as a church mouse. So most people pass that test. Because the poverty test, they will pass it. Because we know that we can pray to God and press into him. But the second test is the test of promotion. 
and I'll prove it. If you go to Matthew 7, from verse 25 to the end, he says, the one that built his house on the rock and the sand, there were three tests. He says, first the rain, then the flood, then the wind. So the rain represents blessing. So everybody will be tested by blessing. So when you become journalist of the year, and now you can buy influence with the IGP, and you can hide stories. How will you do your journalism work? So you, the blessing is a test. Then the position is a test. Now it talks about the flood. The flood always talks about the enemy's attack. Every man God has called will be attacked by the enemy. They will lie against you. They will cheat against you. Then the wind, the opinions of men will test you. So there will be a campaign of negative propaganda. When a year ago, one of my colleagues was beaten by national security, and I had to explain what happened. There were all kinds of stories. People would call me and say, ah, what have you done? They were talking about me. I have thrown the guy under the bus. I'm a bad boss, insulting me. Meanwhile, I'm the guy talking to the guy every day. When God promotes you, he will always test you. In fact, the final stage for promotion is always false accusation. Now, if you cannot deal with those tests, as you move in your journey, you are not ready for leadership. So what am I saying? God God cannot promote you if he cannot prove your authenticity. And the proof is many tests, poverty, penury, position, and then prosperity. The truth is that most people, they are trying to use God to achieve their aim. So they are using the church, Pastor Eric, to make money for themselves. So he's, because you are so great at business ideas, sit at the back, listen to you, he starts a business. I'm not saying you should bring all the money to church, but God is not interested in your money if he doesn't have your heart. So what God wants is a surrendered life. That's what he wants first. So he, he, because you see, most of us, our revelation of Christ is the savior of the world. But look at it. Peter said in the book of Acts that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. So your basic revelation is that he is your savior. He died for you. The second revelation is that he is your Lord. That means that he is your master. It means you can have an argument with your wife and your wife is wrong, but he will say you should apologize. You can go for a program and say I'll do it for free. I won't take money. And you are emceeing for free. Then God says, apart from emceeing for free, give the last 2,000 into this guy's ministry. He is your master. Now, if he's your master, it must show in your money. It must show in your time. It must show in your tongue. It must show in your desires. Now, the issue is we cannot make religious rules about these things because Christianity is not a system of rules. As I said, there are many things that are idiosyncratic. Again, the biblical proof. The Bible said, to him that knows what to do and does not do it to him, it is a sin. So, Pastor Eric may watch Liverpool versus Villarreal. It is good. God is happy. His anointing will flow. He will say to you, Pastor, that for you, the time I want you to pray is when you are playing Champions League. Pastor Eric will watch Liverpool and he's free. You watch Liverpool and you have sinned. For he's spoken to you. For so to you that knows the right thing to do. So we cannot have religion and say, don't wear trousers, don't wear skirt. What God does is he deposits his Holy Spirit in you and unleashes you. He prepares you and puts you in the world. So now he will say, when you are a journalist and you are hosting money show, don't play reggae, don't play Bob Marley. Those are rules but he knows your heart and he says to you use this platform to bring me glory stand up for the truth don't fear man because the fear of man is a snare don't collect their bribes don't partake of their food but set your face like a flint because i need an ambassador there because there's a generation of young people coming who only can interact with social media and if i don't have an honest man on air and all the dumb talking guys are in church they will use the media to destroy so he raises a man called tyler perry and says i'm giving you talent in the area of film go into film and produce worthy wholehearted movies which will show people who they are in me you don't need to use my name necessarily but when they watch the movie they'll know who i am so he gives tyler perry an anointing and tests him and he gives him so much money that when tyler goes to td jake's church he lays hands on jakes and he falls down that goes against our religion because we think only the preacher can lay hands and the media guy has no power but that's an old time doctrine what i'm saying to you is that it's not about what you do it's about whether you know what God has called you to do and whether you know why he has called you and whether you have subjected yourself to the process required because it may take long time it is it's a difficult path but I tell you something the fruit of the spirit is enduring when God raises a man nobody can bring him down he says I have found David my servant it means he searched among many men 
and he says for man looks on the outward appearance your degree your school your tie your bow tie but God weighs the heart uh, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro the world looking for a man uh, he says and I've placed my anointing on him uh, he's doing a recruitment exercise and it's not about height for the military it's not about degree it's about the heart of men uh, for the heart of man is desperately wicked so Solomon says guard your heart with all diligence the qualification for impact is the quality of your heart now if God knows that the promotion is given me I will use it to do what he wants he has no problem blessing me no you see when I see Christians praying for blessing it means they haven't discovered purpose because the blessing is at the point of purpose I don't need to pray for blessing Ephesians says I'm already blessed in Christ so let's talk about the final operating system there is the people who are driven by the world there are people who are driven by self people who are driven by money but there's an operating system that I know whichever industry you are in that operating system is a patient one it's in the book of Acts 17 uh, he says God who made the heaven and the earth uh, he does not live in buildings made by man uh, for he gives to all uh, life and breath and all things uh, and he says it is in him that we live uh, and move uh, and have our being uh, so the final operating system is the system of Christ uh, for the joy that was set before him uh, he endured the cross despising the shame uh, so it's not about what you do it's about operating system you are running so whether you are a keyboardist or a talented musician are you running it after the luciferian system or are you running it after the system that christ has established there are systems like sodom he said to, to abraham he said give me the people and take the goods that is what babylon does it collects the people's life and gives them money in exchange for it so men exchange their soul for the grace to do a cd that will go around the world but what what can a man give in exchange for his soul? I'm not prepared to sell my soul for money. If nobody reads about my story, may it never be read. But I want to stay in purpose, in the mystery of Christ. So now Paul said, God, who knew me before I was born, he, 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 his purpose was to reveal Christ in me. That means that when people look at Bernard, they will see a type of Christ. When they look at Pastor Eric, they see a type of Christ. So the operating system for what you are doing, you may call it ethics, you may call it other things. I call it the Christ system. The Christ system is the system I run. I'm, I am under his guidance. I, I don't, I'm not looking for another preaching appointment. I turn many down. I don't need to use my radio show and convert it into a preaching platform. That's not the purpose. God is looking for a light. I know the purpose why he put me there. Everybody knows purpose, but who will pay the price to walk that path? And I want to say to you, you may be in music. You are doing well, but nobody is hearing your CD. Or you are in acting. Somebody wants to sleep with you to give you a position. No, don't do it. Or an ad agency says, kick back. Don't do it. Run the Christ operating system. Because in due season, in due season, in due season, now look at it. There are many who sow to the flesh. Genesis chapter 8. Seed, time, and harvest. So we sow many things. But in Galatians, it's talking about sowing to the spirit. He said, he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Whatever the arm of flesh gives you will get corrupt. But whatever you get because you are running the Christ system, it grows, never dies. So what we are saying is that don't sow on the basis of the flesh. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Hosea 10, 12. Reap in mercy. So sow to the spirit. Invest prayer in your ministry. Enjoy your days of obscurity. Enjoy your days of trotro. Develop a prayer life. Learn to hear from God. When you are level 300, pray in the bush. Before you become a big man of God. I hear from God. My media ministry, God spoke to me about it. I don't need to be a pastor. God is as interested in media as he's interested in church. So don't, make, don't get it twisted. Now, what does that mean? The standard of God for me as a believer is higher than every world standard. If you don't believe it, read Matthew 5 and Matthew 6. Everything he asks you to do is higher than whatever any, any person. He said, if somebody asks you for your coat, give him your tunic. Somebody says, go one mile, go two miles. 
One mentor of mine says something. He says, the definition of Christianity is encapsulated in three phrases. The summary of Matthew 5 and 6, a Christian in the marketplace, and this is how I close. A Christian is secretly pure. So his purity is not because he's wearing white. Purity is in nature, not in color. A Christian is secretly pure. Number two, he's, so number one, he's, he's strictly pure before God. That's number one. Number two, he is righteously strict to himself. That's number two. Number three, he is mercifully kind to others. That's the summary of Matthew 5 and 6. So that's my compass. Strictly pure before God. Righteously strict to himself. And mercifully kind to others. That is the compass for living the life in the world. It's not about the length of your skirt. It's not about what food we eat. If the Holy Ghost is in you, you will know the skirt you wear. A lot of times we give people rules because we don't trust the Holy Ghost to do any work in them. If what is in them is living, it will speak to them. That doesn't mean we don't need standards. Huh? But when you are a child, you are giving those standards. As you grow in Christ, you check yourself. The Bible says if you judge yourself, nobody will judge you. So let's, let's end with that. A Christian is strictly pure before God. Righteously strict. So no, sorry, a Christian is secretly pure. Because your purity is secret. It's not every day you go and stand in the park and be praying. Bah, bah. It says when you pray, lock your door. So your purity is before God. Huh? He said he was a mighty prophet before God. John, he shall be great in the sight of the Lord. So your purity must be first in the sight of the Lord. Number two, righteously strict on himself. That means practical. For example, there's no way I'll be going to programs and my personal assistant is a girl. It's not possible. It's not because I'll do anything with her. It doesn't send the right signal. So I've decided that any program I go, I only go with young guys. That's my decision. It may not be a sin, but I won't do it. Be righteously strict with yourself. Before I marry, I won't sleep in the same house with a woman I'm not yet married to. You understand? There are some websites I can't go to. Righteously strict with himself. Do you understand? So first, God, so, it, it's, so you put practical things around your life. Practical things around your life. Ah, even pastors, you can't be eating wache at Auntie Muni if you are just a Pentecost pastor. It's on way. It's not a sin, but it's on way. Imagine if you see Pastor Eric at boom. Then say, ama, But the anointing the flow. It's not a sin, oh, but it's on way. You know, so, you know, in the I see, I see. Those days. No, you can't do it. Secretly pure before God, righteously strict to himself, and mercifully kind to others. Am I making sense? So, summary. Know who you are, know why he has called you, and then, after understanding the how, pay the price. That's the issue. The, the price, we all know the how. The price. You will lose jobs. You will lose, you will lose friends. Ah, rich man, Aloski, Charlie, come make us see you, make I give you some dough. You need clearance. I can't go. He doesn't have a right spirit. I can't, he can't be my friend. I can't be on the same platform with him. I don't have anything against it. I says, even somebody is, he said, don't even eat with a person. He says, a believer, in 1 Timothy 3, he says, a, a, a deacon must have a good report in the world so that he will not bring the church into disrepute. So all things are permissible, but all things are not helpful. So I'm not here to give you rules. Know the Savior. Know, you see, me, what I'm doing, eh, I tell people, me, I have a mandate too. Christ has given me something. Say, ah, Charlie, when you talk on it, don't you get afraid? It's not as if I'm the bravest man in the world, though. I, be I beg him when I'm alone with him. It gives me the utterance. There are some things I have to say. It takes me weeks to say it. When I want to do an editorial on some issues, I have to pray. Because you can speak the truth, but I won't speak it in love. So you have to ask God to give you wisdom. Then when the utterance comes, I tell him what are you doing to that Rasta boy? Deal with them. When they listen, they say, oh, you won't say anything. I lost you, you won't say anything. It's not because God has given me something. Let God give you something tangible. Because in the day of trouble, that's what will help you. It's not position and title and all the things they read. It's not, those things don't mean anything. God has given me something. He's given me something in media. I hold on to it. And if I behave well, you give me bigger things. Yeah. Yeah. He'll give you something. He'll give you something. He'll give you something. And that's something, you know what it is. So that's a police. So I interview someone. I say, Charlie, you are wild. So I won't say some things. 
I was interviewing some guys on day. Ask him first question. He faced fire with fire. Ask him second question. By the fourth question, he said, if I don't change strategy, this guy will disgrace me. So he then changed the strategy. He said, Bernard, you are right. Bernard, you are right. That was the end of the interview. Everything, you are right. It's not because I'm a good guy. Oh. God has given me something. And that thing, I've not polluted it by taking his money. I don't need his money. So if I'm standing with him, he say, ah, Master, you are coming to install Ghanaians? No, I don't have anything. But if he's paying my son's school fees, and then he comes on and he talks to us and says, hey, honorable, honorable, mm, yeah, take a commercial break. <laughs> Righteously strict with himself. Yeah, sir. Some people take it and it's okay. And Christmas, they give you a hamper, you take. But you, you, it's not, it's, chai, it's, it's not, let's not make rules. Let's not like, oh, Charlie, I lost you. No, 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 no. Let's not do that. But God will help us. He's going to raise, it's because, because see, you guys, he's, you see, one child chase a thousand. Old. So what you are doing here, he will drop one of you in Kumasi. We don't need two million people here. It's called geometric expansion. After he finished inoculating what he's doing, when he send you to committee 25, you will pass that there. So endure the process, the fasting and those things. Do you understand? Christianity is not fashion. It's a life. It's, it's not fashion. It's not title and those things. No. Be effective. Be true. I don't need you to call me a Christian to make me feel good if I don't have the power to back it. What, what, how does that help me? Give me grace so I can make a name for you, not for myself. What do I need a name for? I, why? I, I want my name to be mentioned when, they are, when I stand before the king with the eyes of fire. When he puts my work through fire and it will still stand. Not journalist of the year. For what? I'm not despising the award. But I have a master. So, and when you come before a man who fears God, you fear. Yeah, because I, I don't have anything. I don't, I don't know anything. I'm, I, I wasn't collecting prize. So, so am I the smartest? And there smarter journalists than me. And there more eloquent ones. And there better looking ones. So what's the issue? God will give you something. Amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen. Amen. So, I don't know if I've fulfilled the, I've fulfilled the thank assignment. You. Yeah, thank you very much, okay. uh, Minister Bernard. Please, we want to take questions. Can, I, can we have the mic stand here, please? Yeah, but the mic stand would be ideal. The mic stand. So, so if I should stand here still, eh? You can, yes. I'm still there. So please, if you want to ask a question, come and, and line up. Don't we have mic stands in this room? All right, you, can, you come and use the mic. So you, um, questions. Now, uh, um, uh, Minister Bernard. Yes. Uh, you, 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 you said that you really didn't know that you get into a journalism. When did it become very clear? What were the signals you had within yourself? What were the internal signals? And the external signal, you mentioned it that you started doing some program, but what are the internal signals? And what are some of the signals that you need to know that this, what I'm pursuing is what God wants me to get into purpose? Thank you for that question. <clears throat> So even though I resisted the initial attempt to do universe, after I started being trained, I realized I was actually, I liked it. I wasn't built for it in the sense that in those days, a morning, a radio host had a good voice. My voice is not the best. Do you understand? Like Comrade Dumont and things, they have very rich voice. I don't have a rich voice. I don't have a radio voice. So sometimes when you look at the physical sign, there's no physical sign I have a radio voice. But I liked it. I liked it. I, I sort of, I was, able to, also, I was able to do seven days a week. So I was doing economics, geography, and maths. I would do Radio Universe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I wasn't getting paid, but I liked it. Every vacation, I would stay on campus. They were not paying us. Monday to Saturday, campus exclusive. Sunday, exposition. Wednesday night, I will play Soul Serenade. Close the station. Thursday, come and open it. So sometimes, when you can do it without money, I have the and it's not so. That I didn't have the physical attributes for it, but I liked it, and I was willing to learn. So that was the, the first sign. Then, of course, I had peace, peace. So when I go for lectures, tingi tingi. So I come and do a campus exclusive. Go back to shower, Legon Hall. 
go to Tingi Tingi, which is what, what, what they change the name now. What's the name now? Something JQ. I call it Tingi Tingi. From Tingi Tingi, I'll go to universe to edit news. So I'll spend my time at universe. I'm doing economics, a difficult course. Read the news at 12, edit some stories, go to my two o'clock lecture. Come back at four o'clock, produce allergy, campus exclusive. So the grace was there. Because I still got a first class in economics. Right? Combining, combining it with campus, I was a, a hall secretary. So I ran for elections and won. I was LPU secretary, which means every Sunday we invite people to come and preach. I write minutes. I was secretary of everything. <laughs> everything I was, so this year I was secretary, LPU secretary, class captain. But I still got the first class. So, so there's the liking for it, then there's the peace, and then there's the grace. The grace is, how, how, how can you get a first class doing all of these things? Do you understand me? So there's the grace as well. So those are some of the signs. The, 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 the interest. The promotion came much later. So don't use promotion as an evidence of a call. You can be in something and they won't give you anything. We had an accountant. He was, Charlie, he was, wow, they had a mustache from Kuhu. He won't give you anything. <laughs> my first sponsorship for my show was given to me by Reverend, er, Reverend Ansa, Covenant Family. I was, level three. I was hosting a show called Exposition. We didn't have money to bring guests. He ran a company called Nab Brothers at Accra, Tudu. I went to his office. He had so many visitors. Then I said, I want to see you. Who are you? Bernard Avle. I have not heard of you. I do a show called Exposition. I know you're a Christian. I want you to sponsor my program. I said, I don't have money. What do you have? He said, I have power malt. He gave me like a truckload of power malt, packs of six. I went to put it at the station. So when the guest comes, when he's going, I give him malt. To go. I, that month, we used to even do party a whole year. That was my first sponsorship. Reverend Ansa. Every time God blesses me, God will bless him. I'm telling you. Why? Because when, when you can see somebody's greatness when you were young, I remember he wanted to get me to work at Joy FM so bad. He went to tell us, but God's plan was in Joy FM. God had a different plan. Every time God blesses me, there are some people, when God raises me, he will benefit him. Or his children will get benefit. He will never be poor because of what he did. Just, even if I don't pray, God will do it. See, so, and that was level, so my first sponsorship was level 300. So I don't use the financial response to, it's not, that's not the evidence that God is in it. It's the peace, it's the grace, and it's the fulfillment. Am I making sense? It's true for relationships too. Grace and peace in relationship. Not because when you see you are happy. Grace and peace. Because it's the peace of God past it understanding. What does that mean? Your understanding can only decipher certain things. But the peace of God is superior to it. Yeah. So sometimes you don't understand something. But the peace of God keeps your heart cool. You will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts you. So peace is evidence of Christ's life. Very important. What's up, Yeah, I, I wanted to ask um, to what extent does placement play a key role in the success of a Christian professional? Um, what I mean is knowing your purpose is important, knowing why you do the right thing and how to do it. What if you find yourself working in a place that has ideals that are conflicting to why God wanted to do things in a particular way. And yet, um, you know, so, so my issue is if you find yourself in such an environment as a professional, how do you manage it? Yeah. That's a good question. So what I'll say is that when you are working in a place, there are certain questions you must ask. Is this, is this job God's purpose or is this job a preparation for my purpose? It's very important. Am I in this church as the place I'm to be or a preparation for something? If it's preparation, what am I supposed to learn? What lesson? What, what is God using this thing to teach me? Do you understand? So that's the first question you ask yourself. Am I in purpose or preparation for purpose within this system? I always tell young people, don't work to earn. Work to learn first. Because when I take you as a national service person from GIJ, for three years, you are useless to me. I have to teach you. Because even though you've learned journalism, learning doesn't take place in the classroom. Learning takes place in the field. 
So in the three years you are my intern, you are slowing me down. So you work to learn first, then you now work to earn. Okay, so sometimes you can be working in a place where either they don't pay you well or whatever, or even it's, in, it's like a difficult place. But you can't stay forever in a place which disagrees with your values. Because the Bible says something interesting. It says if a man puts a piece of righteous something on a dirty thing, it doesn't make it righteous. But if you put dirt on a righteous person, it makes it dirty. So if you stay, so what I'm saying is that the world system is very powerful to corrupt you easier. So if you're in a system where the value systems don't agree with your values, you have to leave. That conflict is a language. Pain is a signal. Discomfort is a, a, a coded message. So if there's always conflict of values, they want to do business, the guy is shady. If you stay there for two years, he will convert you. You will become his convert. <laughs> and you will now be doing the thing with master skill. <laughs> you will change the numbers in the book and you come and give the title to Pastor Eric. And he also pray for you not knowing. And you, you will use the money to do God's work, but you won't get blessed. I don't make sense. So, and you see, let me tell you something. One, one, one evidence of life is sense. When I say sense, it's not nyansa. Sense. Paul says something. He says, they are past feeling. A good Christian has very refined feelings. So, there are, there, are, there are things you feel. Your spiritual sense. For example, if you're a good Christian, there are times God just, you know you have to fast. Church doesn't call fast. You just feel that there's a spirit. Like, I remember the time my father was about to die. I, I felt something. So when my mom called me that my dad was in the hospital, I knew he was going to die. I just knew it. Because most of the time my dad tells me that dad is not well. Oh, I'll call, pray. It's, it's okay. But the day when she called me, and this was, before, this was a night, I knew he was going to die. That's a sense of feeling. All right? And that's discernment. And you, as you grow, discernment is the highest spiritual sense. Re recently, another relative died, and I felt something again. God is trying to train you. There are many things you must learn as a Christian. The, the, it's called the knowing of revelation. No. When I met Justine, I knew she was my wife. I knew. That's the first one. Eh? So young people, you must know. I knew that city was where I was supposed to be. Then the, the, the hearing of faith. God gave me a word about my radio station. I knew that was what I was going to wear, but it was a hear, I heard it. Then there's also the sight. You can see vision. Prophetic guys, they see things. He can see my story building before I see it. Sight. The sight. Jesus says, the father loves the son, and he shows him what he will do. Then there's the taste of discernment. That's the highest one. Because that one, somebody can come and preach here. The guy is a liar. But you can sense it. Everything says correct. He's wearing the same suit. He's preaching the same Bible. Pastor will never invite him again. I said, ah, but Pastor, I don't know. I said, oh, child. No, everything be cool. He said, oh, yeah, but he won't invite him again. Because he can discern that there was something wrong with the guy. That's, that one is high level. So you all be jumping. You may even be crying when he's preaching. <laughs> but because you are not mature, you can't catch him. You say, I did never be a don. Never can hear again. So, and see, these, these are not things we teach high level. It's, this is normal Christianity. Yeah, son. it's not about my pastor, my bishop. No, forget those things. Be effective in your work. Oh. There's nothing you are doing that Christ cannot make you do it better. Ah, somebody who could create the whole universe, is it economics that he can't help you pass? When I was doing elections on campus, or so far, I said it's the glory of God, level 300. JCR president, secretary, vice president, treasurer, and sports secretary. I knew, you know, it's funny, my best friend, Yellow, we were campaigning together. And he said we should support some lady. And I said, this lady will not win. It's not as if I'm a juju man. No. I knew that this other one will win. When you, are, when you pray, God will show you things. So I knew the set that we will do the election with. So even though there was one of them I was campaigning with, I knew he wasn't going to win. But, and I can't tell him that you win. <laughs> you know so it's not as if politics. No, you, you, this is Christianity. Why do you think God doesn't have things to say to me? It's like radio. As we are sitting here, Joy FM is possible. Peace is possible. City is possible. You don't have a transistor. So Peace FM is blasting. Champions League, but you can't hear because you don't have a transistor. So the Bible said, let him who hath an ear. Not ears. We, everybody has ears. Revelations, the, chapter 3, the last verse. And let, chapter, it said, let he who hath an ear hear what the Spirit is saying. That's the, the two. And you see, there are levels of spiritual discernment. Sorry, I'm, I'm digressing. You so you have... I can only see 180 degrees. I can't see behind my head. 
but I can, he I can hear behind my head. So hearing is deeper than seeing. And then sensing, look at it. Paul says, eye has not seen 180 degree sight, nor ear head, 360 degree hearing, nor has it entered the heart of man. So now, there are things God will drop in your heart which is deeper than what you hear. That's, that's, that's knowing God. That's what it is. It's not about pastor, prayer, warrior. No, no, no. Let's stop those things. Know God for yourself. Because if you marry the wrong man, you may die in that marriage. With all the wedding and blessing. Otabel may even bless your wedding. The man will still beat you. Because you haven't heard. And Otabel cannot hear for you. Let's stop the nonsense. Pray for God to speak to you. How can I go and marry somebody I don't know in my spirit? Even the one God showed me, I prayed. Then you just go and marry somebody. Go and the man that said, go and marry because he has money. Are you sick? He has money. If they are beating me, will come and save me. No. Here. Many people in the church, it says, my sheep know me. They hear my voice. So you, you, are, you are not hearing. You are just watching TV, doing Facebook. You are happy yourself. Change. As well. Thank you. If you don't stop me, I'll talk for long. Ago. No, okay. There's, there's, there's a question I want to still ask. Okay. Um, how have you been able to uh, manage your tight? I know you live somewhere here. And how you've managed to do your Christian work, your service in church, because I know you're a minister in your church. You are involved in running church and all that. And able to, because we have seen people, when uh, they become very successful, their worship of God changes. And they are always using SQ. Well, how have you been able to manage that? Fantastic. I think there are three reasons. First reason is that some of the things you start when you are early. So you develop a good prayer life when you're on campus. Who is in, on campus here? Who is a student in a university? University is not to get Intel or XT. It's to build a framework that will be the reference point for the rest of your life. His prayer life, he developed it when he was in Polytechnic and those places, not when he started pastoring. So build a, a robust spiritual life when you are young. It becomes easy like breathing. That's number one. Number two, I have a great boss. Like I said to you, I said I'm coming here. He knows because of what I stand for. He won't send me to some places. Do you understand? And if I go and preach on Sunday, he won't judge me for it. So you need to work for the right person. That's very, very important. And he creates the system that allows it. My family. If I didn't have the wife I had, I can't be here. Four boys. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> She's the one. Have it. So marry properly. She's praying for me. She's not trying to compete with me. Take a picture. Bernard Abel's wife is on Facebook also blasting somebody. She doesn't need those things. She, she doesn't. So in a relationship, you see, it's because it's not marry well. My wife is very important. And we don't judge wife by whether they can come and stand on stage and speak. Sometimes successful men, their wives are behind the scenes doing great things for them. So you need to marry well. There are other reasons, but I think those are a few. Because if it wasn't for the kind of organization I worked for, and then the kind of wife I had, it would be difficult to do this. It would be very tough. And also because I hustled before, for many years, nobody was listening to my show. In fact, there were times when my producers were listening to other shows, when they were producing me. <laughs> oh, you don't know. Eh? Someday I was doing a show, and come out was interviewing Kwabne Japan. Some big interview on him, me, OJ. They all had phones in their ears. Then they called somebody and put the person on the phone, and I was interviewing the person. They were listening to the other stage. But it's fine. Because it's better to hide than make those mistakes. Do you understand? So it's cool. It's not a problem. Don't be in a hurry to come out. Don't be in a hurry to come on air. It can destroy you. I am a journalist. Media can destroy you faster than cocaine. And when you're addicted to media, you can't pull out. So everything, you have to say something on social media so they think you are normal. So you start lying. It's madness. <laughs> a lot of it is madness. So watch it. So also for grace, friends, mentors, all of those things. And last thing I'll say, I'm not against big church. I used to be in SEM. SEM is a great church. When I went to the UK to do my master's, I went to a church at... Coventry, House of Love, Redeemed. We were like 12 people in the church. Pastor John taught me, he discipled me. He put me in the Sunday school, Redeemed Sunday school. It's not Sunday school, it's Bible study Sunday school. In that church, I was singing, lead singer. We were only 12. <laughs> I was doing praise and worship. I was leading prayer. I was doing Bible study. We would go to London to go and do Bible study 
conference as an MBA student. Pastor John discipled me. When I came back to Ghana, I said I can't join a big church. I want a church that if I don't come to church, I can be accountable. So sometimes being in a church where Pastor Eric, hey, I don't see you for two years. Why are you there? If I am at ICGC Christ Temple, oh my brother, I will sit at the back, Charlie, what people can't see me. So this is me. I'm not saying don't join a big church. I'm saying when I, when I went to UK, this, I, that's why I love New My Life. Small. Everybody knows everybody. It's good that way. You understand? So the mega church has its place, but not yet for me. Okay? Some of you, mega church is good for you, but not me. That has also helped me. So I'm accountable. I'm accountable. I had to tell my pastor I was coming here. He said, may the Lord give you utterance, which is why I was firing like that. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not a freelance preacher. I had to tell him. He won't say no, but Ketsi demands. Oh, sorry, Charlie. Pastor, oh, Pastor, Charlie. Fire, fire. Keep thank for me. Simple. But I should tell him. I can't say, oh, I'm busy. You know, and he can see me on the TV, so you think I'm there, but I'm here. You see? So, put yourself under strict guidance, so you don't make, you, otherwise you destroy yourself. I don't, so I have people, Charlie, they have all can tell me to stop, and I'll stop. Even he can tell me some things, this man. <laughs> Even though I'm not in this church, he can tell me, hey, Koku, what's happening? I mean, you, know, you, 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 need, you put myself under government. The heir, as long as it's a child, differed nothing from a slave, but it's under tutors and governors until the appointed time for the father. So I'm not a fool. I want to live long. <laughs> thank All right, you. Thank you. I think no questions. Let's, you want a question? Then come up and let's quickly ask the question. Okay, my question is just a, a follow-up to what you said earlier. Do we still have a principal Christian in politics? For example, somebody going for an elective post. I can't imagine somebody saying, I'm going to increase, increase tax, and then you are going to pay e-levy. I'm not sure that person will win an election. So how do you maintain that Christian principle as a core professional politician? Even in journalism, I'm struggling. So I won't even attempt to tell you how politicians should do their own. <laughs> First, I will bring some policies and then you answer. The, the level of policies I did on campus, this is the wisdom. I went with a team. So in JCR elections, there are five. So the five of you can decide that you won't spend all your money doing Mapuka. When I was in level 200, the JCR people brought girls from Cote d'Ivoire in the night, come and dance Mapuka. That's the JCR. They call it whole week. That's what annoyed me to become a politician on campus. But I didn't go in with a messiah complex that me alone will change everything. If the president is a fool and the secretary is wise, the vice president is a fool, you are fools. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the, so you need critical mass. So I always tell people when you want to do politics, develop yourself, number one. Build a network. Okay, if you are the only person speaking truth in the room, you, shall, you can be hot. You need the grace for it. Some of my politician friends have grace for politics. Ah! They can see a crowd, no, they start talking. They have the grace. But, so, I, so you see, there's the spiritual side of having the core, but there's also the practical side. Develop a network of people who can all, who have the same values. So you don't rush into politics, you plan your way into it. One of the politicians I reviewed, he said to me, Bernard, he said one day, someday I did an interview, he said, you, you have to serve your country, but don't enter politics now. He said, make your money like me. He was a doctor before he became a politician. He says, when I became a politician, I didn't need anybody's money, and I could walk away anytime, because I came in to do a job, and I did it, and I left. And he says, you don't enter politics early. Yes, and it's not as if he's prophet. He's just telling me. But I'm saying, I see, he knows that this, the game, the way it is, you must go with your own defense mechanism. Yes, but if you go, young guy, somebody give you two million, you campaign, then he's doing some nya, you can't do it. Do you get me? So it's not as if politics is evil or anything. But don't, be, don't just enter because you want to enter. <laughs> Prepare yourself properly. Because it's a wild terrain. It's wild. People are doing juju and things. And you see, Christ, no, it's not a title. You must know him personally. So that when they throw the thing, they say, hey, I call you a wild. It's not like, oh, they are past, sorry. Then, so, no. He said, be, be harmless as dove, but be wise as a serpent. 
Okay, so I think preparation is key going for politics. And if, I, if you are a Christian going to politics, prepare yourself. Prepare your outside work. Proverbs 24. Make it fit for yourself in the field. Then build your house. Even Solomon is telling you. So if you want to do politics, fine. Prepare. Get a network. Get a network so that you can be collectively accountable. Otherwise, Charlie, you collect a bribe. And you chop the bribe and you say, oh God, Charlie. Oh God, forgive me, Charlie. Because bribe money is sweet. Solomon said, stolen bread is sweeter. But when you finish, your mouth is full of gravels. Think about it. So that's my answer to the politics guy. Thank you. All right. Let's give a big hand clap. I think we have done a lot of today. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. All right. So we want to give an offering before we leave. And uh, what a great exposition. You have to listen to Minister Avle over and over. I was trying to type. I realized that he was speaking faster than my typing. So we have a podcast and uh, we will have to play the podcast on Friday because normally Sunday we played another day. So let's make sure that Friday it will be on the platforms. You will do this. So the, the band, let's get ready to play and uh, and uh, how many have been blessed tonight? A lot of principles, a lot of principles, a lot of principles. I think let's allow Minister Bernard to go into the lounge whilst we. Where's Kofi? Okay, let's give a big hand clap. coming in to also share thoughts about how to run multiple businesses at the same time and managing them very well. Let's rise on our feet and the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord lift up his continent and put you and grant you peace. Go with this assurance that God is raising you up as a light in darkness and may everything we receive tonight resonate in our hearts and align us with the purpose of God that will do the will of God at the end of the day. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's share the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Make us stand forever. God bless you. Let's see you on Sunday. Friday, prayer points will come.
and let's make sure that we fast.
Are you seeking to build an enduring and meaningful business or career as an entrepreneur or as a career person? Then get ready for a Power 2022 seminar series for three Wednesdays of winning strategies, three nights of high impact learning with three distinguished industry voices and experts all in one place at ICGC Open Heavens Temple at Jirigano, East Lagon. Speaking at this year's seminar series are the Marketplace Apostle and celebrated media personality Bernard Avle, Ghana on 4th May 2022 at 7 p.m. The renowned and award-winning serial entrepreneur Dedo Kofi, Ghana 11th May 2022 at 7 p.m. and the astute management and business consultant Dr. Bernard Appiah, UK on 18th May 2022 at 7 p.m. Empower 2022 seminar series. It is enlightening, enriching, engaging and exciting. Save these dates of 4th, 11th and 18th in May and book your seats.